Another week, another win for Inter Miami, and we'll tell you why we think it's one of the most impressive wins in club history, all right here on the Inter Miami Weekly Show. Another beautiful day at Chase Stadium here after another win for Inter Miami. Happy to have you with us on the Inter Miami Weekly Show. That's Kieran Gibbs. I'm Joe Malfa. Uh, Kieran, I, I intro the show that way at that little tease at the beginning for a reason, right? I, I genuinely think, and I think you agree, that was one of the most impressive wins in, in club history for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, I don't think you're too far off, Joe. I think... Listen, it was a, a really efficient performance from Miami. Um, I was so impressed, you know, from start to finish, the way they handled the game. Games against Columbus are always interesting because it's a, a battle for possession. I think Columbus won the battle for possession, but Miami were just more effective and they were more clinical. They defended really well from the front, um, especially the, the front three players. I thought their, their timing of their press was was excellent um, and they took their chances. You you have to give the, the whole squad credit. I think the, 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 the show was stolen by, by a young Ian Frey, which I'm, I'm sure we'll go into. Um, but as you said, really, really impressive three points for Miami. Yeah, let's waste no time. Let's get into those highlights and see exactly what we're talking about here with Ian Frey. They didn't wait too long in this one, Inter-Miami. It's been an issue this year, starting games slowly for the club, but they start this one quickly against Columbus. It's a team in Columbus that you have to start quickly against because if they take the game to you, they can smother you. That's what they've done basically to every other team in the league as they've had their successful start to the year. Not this time. Inter Miami had a chance six minutes in, nearly missed this one from distance, and then ten minutes in, Ian Frey has his moment. Yeah, the start was the was the perfect start for Miami. The way they defended from the front, it allowed them to get this this early corner. And what a moment for for Ian Frey. I mean, for what he's had to have gone through over the last few years, I'm not sure he expected uh, this this start, <laughs> but. Um, it's just so shows exactly who he is as a person and the type of character that he is to, to have overcome that um, and, and got on the goal for, for into Miami. And after they got that goal, they weren't relaxing in any way. They wanted to keep it going, and it wouldn't take long to find a second. No, um, and and again, Ian Frey does so well here to, to keep the pressure on from the front. Um, Julian Gressel does a nice bit of footwork and lifts it up for, for Campana, who follows up with the rebound. Um, and it's just a great start from Miami on all fronts, all fronts, the way they defended um, and the way that they've managed to be more efficient than they have in, in recent weeks to, you know, get the second goal and get a nice cushion um, in the first half. And this was again without the likes of Aviles, without the likes of Ruiz on top of the players missing right now for international duty because of those red cards they picked up in the game prior. You knew that Columbus would find a way back. They do get the goal right before halftime, but that would be it. We were expecting more of a frantic second half in this one. Wasn't the case. Inter-Miami just a, a terrific job of shutting the door. Yeah, that's it. They shut the door tremendously. Um, I haven't seen a, a defensive performance like this from them for a while now so that's really encouraging for, for Tata especially with you know all of the players missing uh, the, the the ones that had to come in and step up for, for the team they've done a great job I mean you're talking about players you know like Ian Frey that have been out for a, a few years and, and have come back into the team and haven't looked out of place at all um, so a, a, a well accomplished performance from, from Miami and that's why I start the show by saying that this genuinely might have been one of the most impressive wins in club history it's not going to lift a trophy of course like the shootout win against Nashville did last year in the League's Cup. It's not against a rival in any way, but considering how they did it, jumping on them early when that had been an issue for the club going going back a few weeks against one of the best teams in the league, the reigning champions who just made the CONCACAF Champions Cup final, who in many people's minds might be among the favorites to win it again. So that's your opponent with the players missing, with the players injured, international duty players stepping in, all-encompassing performance, the way they did it, the way they controlled it, genuinely uh, one of those that, again, you'll forget about because it's just a random game in June, but one of the most impressive showings you'll see from the club. Yeah, well, there were just so many reasons as to why they, you know, shouldn't have got the win. We said it the week before, you know, suspensions, um, injuries, players missing on international duty, and they've really just stepped up as though it was just a, another game for them and, and pretty much brushed Columbus aside. Um, it was 
pretty impressive the way they've done that. Um, that's not easy to do when you have new players coming into the team um, that haven't been there for a while. It, it can always get a bit frantic, a bit chaotic. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't a game that we've seen, you know, that represents Miami in, in any way this season. So, like you said, a, a really impressive win and, and delighted for the boys. Most delighted for Ian Frey. Above anybody else, you, you alluded to it, talking about the highlights, taking us through his story now. It's it's a torn ACL in 2021. It's a torn ACL in 2022. It's a third torn ACL that he suffered. A lot of people forget about this. In Messi's debut, that big emphatic win over Cruz Azul with his late free kick earlier in that game is when Ian suffered that third torn ACL. And if you remember, at the end of that game, Messi, beside the goal, endears himself to the crowd by holding up Ian's jersey in the locker room afterwards in that emotional moment. Um, I don't think anybody can imagine going through what he's gone through and to come back from it three times still at, 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 as young as he is in his early 20s. You stay healthy, that's a special player and it's a special person to have already persevered to, to get through all he's gotten through. It's really hard to put into words how delighted I am um, for him, to be honest, first and foremost. But also, you can't imagine you know, how difficult it is to do that. Um, I've been, had a, an injury setback when I was similar to his age, just spent a year out and came back and took me a while to really get my rhythm back. Um, but the thought of doing that three times uh, is, is unimaginable. I mean, he's uh, a person that when I first came to the club, um, I was really impressed by. I felt that he's, his ceiling was just so high mm. in, in terms of physically, but also mentally. And I could tell how much, you know, he wanted to, you know, have, have a career in the game. And, and then to see him, you know, with the setbacks, um, to see him every day in training for almost two years, um, you know, he would be on the bike a lot of the time, watching the, watching the boys from, from inside the gym train and, and come in. And that's hard to do, you know, just for a few weeks, let alone for Basically a few three years. years. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he deserves all of the credit that he gets. Um, I could tell, you know, just from speaking to him after his first one and his second one, I regularly speak to him um, and try and, you know, give him bits of advice. Um, but I could tell that he was always going to come back no matter what, that there was nothing stopping this guy. Um, he's extremely humble. Um, he has a good family around him and they've managed to keep him, you know, mentally, you know, secure enough to come back and, and not only to just come back, yeah. to actually come back and put in the performance that, that he's done is take something very, very special, very, very special. Um, so you have to give him all of the credit. Um, you know, you've got the greatest player in the world telling him that, you know, everyone's thinking about yeah. him. And so I'm sure that that's helped him. Um, and now it's just onwards, onwards and upwards. You could see from his celebration that when he scored, it was almost like, you know, OK, I'm, I'm back, but you haven't seen anything. yet, Right. You know, like and to do that after three years, you know, a lot of players would have just celebrated and been, you know, gone down on their knees. He was like he was already put it behind yeah, back him to defend, ready he, for the next moment. he was ready for the next moment and that just tells you all you need to know about him and again for, for those who might not be familiar with his story exactly when we say three years it is literally three he, the first torn ACL happened the next one nearly a year to the day in the preseason of 2022 so it was 2021 2022 nearly a year to the day after he had just gotten back then he comes back he plays the early portion of last year and then it was in that game in July against Cruz Azul the third torn ACL so 21, 22, 23, ACL, 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 persevered through it all, back. It's a truly incredible story. And I think what I'm most excited for going forward, Kieran, aside from what he could bring to the club and, and seeing his career blossom, I'm excited for people outside of this club to learn about him because he, he's that special of a person and, and what he's been through. I'm excited for the rest of MLS fans and the rest of global football fans to catch on to his story and who he is because it's something that should be shared with everybody and not just this little bubble that we have here. Yeah, and the thing is, is that he's the type of person that only wants to do well on the pitch. You know, he doesn't like to talk. Um, he's not one of them that wants a lot of attention. Um, he literally just wants to show you what he can do on the field and and, and that's it. Um, he, he does his talking on the pitch. He has done since I've known him and I'm sure he'll, he'll continue to do that. Everyone will see the, the type of player that he is. I mean, we can see how explosive he is um, physically. Um, his recovery runs as a defender, which managers love. Um, are, I've never seen it. I haven't seen too many players in the game 
like like it and uh, I'm being serious there he is um, he has that physical capacity to he has the speed the strength um, the agility um, he, he, he's got it all he's got it all physically and, and obviously we've seen now you know that mentally he has it all as well so that there's no there's no telling what what he can do in the game obviously you know he's still just come back so we want to we want him to be managed well um, we don't want to overdo it right. and, 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 and something it's been a long long time since he's played regular football um, but really excited for him to just be back and hopefully just enjoying himself he, he even looked like he was enjoying himself he looked like he had no fear um, a lot of players would have come back after that and you know played a little bit reserved but he just he's fearless you know he just wants to go out there and just do and give his all uh, every game every moment shifting gears from from the story to the tactical and where he slots in we've seen him whether it's for the, the two team as he's worked his way back or, or on the come up through, through the younger years and even with the first team since he, he broke in we've seen him as a center back and we've seen him on the right side do you reckon he's got a better more comfortable spot or is it just put me in there coach and i'll do what you need me to do i mean i've seen him play all across the the back line and look comfortable in every position. He even position. stepped into into the six last year at times when called upon, by right. the way. So so he's played three positions. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's um he's very versatile across the back line for me. Um I, I love him as a third centre back if if you're gonna play three at the back. Okay. Um I love him as as a full back as well because you know he's he's leggy. He's got those he's got the athleticism to get up and down the pitch. Um and you know he, it's all, it's almost like he doesn't get tired. He's his stamina is um at elite level. So yeah he's he's really got um, all of the tools to play anywhere across the back line and also he's a leader mm. you know he's a leader he's he, you can tell from um, you know the way he's his body language is on the pitch that he's there to to, to be a soldier for the for his team and and, and he wants to, to lead the team and um, and get the win at, at any cost one other player I wanted to focus on before we start looking ahead to Nashville is Leo Campana. You and I have talked about him all year long that when the opportunity would arise around this time of year, knowing that Luis Suarez would probably be gone at Copa America and knowing that throughout the year there'd be moments where Tata would give Suarez a rest at his age, trying to preserve him for the stretch run. We knew that when Campana was called upon, he'd have to make the most of it because the opportunities might be slim. He has done that time after time now this season five goals now on the season whenever he's been called upon he's done it whether that's a sub coming on getting that late winner here in the rain against dc united whether it's starting in this period of the schedule now and starting to put a couple of goals together up to five on the season what have you seen from him in this moment um i'm seeing a case that uh is gonna be difficult to, to keep it's difficult to keep hold of a player like that because they're performing when they're coming off the bench they're performing when they're starting and he's been a player that has performed you know even when he was the sole striker for Miami so you see these cases every so often and it seems like he, he's one of them because um, you know he doesn't seem to be affected when he's not playing um, which is great for a manager but it's also really difficult to keep hold of these players, um, which is a credit to him because he, he's he's proven, you know, he's proven that when you don't play him, he's going to perform. And when you do play him, he's going to perform. So it's becoming more and more difficult to leave him out. Um, another mentality monster because, you know, he's not listening to any outside noise um, and he's not doubting himself. So when you get a player like that, you know, other clubs are, go are going to come knocking, but at the moment he seems pretty happy to, to, to be here and, and chipping in for, for his team and his club. Um, and so, you know, Miami have to be delighted with him at the moment. He's um, he's such a handful physically. Um, he's he's getting more clever now, I think, as he's the years are going on. he's He knows, you know, he's ov obviously always had an eye for the goal, right. but I think that the way he's becoming more efficient in his mm. performances um we're just seeing someone who's just growing in in stature his, his maturity is way above his years anyway and i think that now he's just his game understanding is is becoming higher and higher well it's another person who you're happy to have here you know it's gonna be hard to hold on to him and you just enjoy it while you can and right now it just means win after win for this club again two to one over columbus now somebody looking forward who's going to fit that category of a player who is maturing very quickly who's starting to turn some heads 
young Tyler Hall, the teenager right now, has been turning heads at the MLS Next Pro level with Inter Miami too, and he's been doing it on the international level. He was a captain of the United States at the U17 World Cup back in November. We had a chance to catch up with him this past week. Tyler, you've been at this club now for a couple of years. We've seen your career really taken off, not only for Inter Miami, but for the U.S. youth national team as well. 16 caps. You got to cap in the group last year, last November at the U-17 World Cup. At this point in your career, just, just what does it mean to you to already have that under your belt? It's an amazing feeling because uh, not every player gets to captain a U-17 World Cup team. So just being able to get this experience at such a young age is incredible. And it gives me more experience. So in the future, if I do get that role again, I'm able to showcase what I have and give it my all in the game and give my leadership in the team. It's funny, you never know who's watching or what the situation is. You're not there yet, you're still 18 years old, but when the time comes that you get married, you'll find that on your wedding day, bride has a lot to do. Hair, makeup, they're up at 6 a.m. Groom's got nothing to do. So my wedding day was November 12th, yeah. the day you walked out against South Korea. So mm -hmm. I started my wedding day waking up, sitting on the couch, uh -huh. and watching you lead the team out the tunnel really? for the game against South Korea. So you never know who's watching yeah. or when they're watching, but That's cool. special moment for you. And you're forever etched in my wedding day, too, mm -hmm. in a way that you probably never knew until right now. But Thank um, you for <laughs> Of course. So you're at a point now, again, 18 years old, where as much as you want to be playing with the first team, you, you know, your turn's coming and you're right there. You've been on the bench a few times. You see it up close, you're right there. How much does it drive you to feel that you're that close to your breakthrough? It drives me a lot just because I'm that close to being on the field, being on the bench, being able to sit next to these players and being able to be, able to be a handshake away from them. And just being in that vicinity with them is incredible because not every player gets to be next to these players and be that close. So it's incredible and I'm going to be driving for more opportunities like that and hopefully more to come. And to take that a step further, you've got Toto Aviles right now, who's again close to you in age, about a year and a half, two years older than you. So you see that it's not impossible to, to break through and, and have that impact as a center back at such a young age. I know a lot of people think center back, you're better as your career goes along, you got more experience, you read the game well, but it's doable. And you see Aviles doing it, take it a step further. How much does that drive you to know that, hey, a, a year or two from now, you're in his position? Like you said, he's only a year and a half older than me. And uh, it's incredible to see that a player that young is able to step onto the first team field and be able to play 100% and play all like his all. So it just drives me a lot that I'm capable to, capable to be on that field. So um, hopefully I get onto that field and get to show what I have. And briefly from what I mentioned before, right? People think about center backs, the experience, uh, Giorgio Chiellini of the world and what he just did with LAFC and, and guys like that who are older in the position to see the game differently. Who have you looked up to in your young career? I know center back, nobody really wants to be a center back, right? You yeah. all want to be a striker yeah. as a kid sure. growing up, score the goals. You're a center back. Who have you looked up to uh, uh, on your ascent? Um, mainly Virgil van Dijk and mm -hmm. Sergio Ramos. Virgil van Dijk because of his IQ and his leadership and Sergio Ramos for his aggression and leadership as well. So those are the main two that I've been looking up to. That's two good ones to look up yeah. to, I would say. But just leave out, you know, some of the, uh, uh, the, the you know, MMA tactics of Sergio Ramos <laughs> that we see in there as well. Um, you've got the academy here that's been mm -hmm. terrific and the next pro team in, in uh, Inter Miami too, where we've seen players come through, David Ruiz, Ben Akramaski, list goes on and on. You're next, right? You're, you're right there in that next group. What does it say about the player development process here that you've had so many come through already? You're right there in that next group. You're there on the day-to-day. -day. What makes it so special and so successful in that player development pathway? Um, the development process in this club has been incredible from the coaches. Um, I've been, every step in this club has been amazing. Um, and I've been hand-in-hand -hand with David Ruiz and Ben Akamrasi. So it just shows that I'm capable of being on the field or training right next to them. So. I'm driven to be on the field with them and want to be playing with them. You've played in a Youth World Cup. You're on the brink of an MLS breakthrough. You're 18. So as much as you want it to come quickly, there's probably a short-term vision and a long-term vision. Whether it's for club or country, what are some short-term goals you have and what are you looking at long-term? Um, short-term goals, um, looking to play with the first team, uh, being having more appearances on the bench, getting that experience, seeing what I could do, learning from these guys, and long-term goals, um, probably... You could shoot high, you could shoot high. Uh, <laughs> men's U.S. national team, this is a big goal. 
But uh, I like to set my goals high, and when I achieve them, um, my, me and my family are very proud. So, yeah. Well, we're all excited to watch. We all wish you the best of luck, and we thank you for taking some time out with us today. Thank you. Tyler's outstanding. If you haven't had a chance to catch an Inter Miami game uh, at the MLS Next Pro level yet, you can catch those on MLSNextPro.com. You can catch them on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. He is just a rock at center back. I've had a chance to call some of his games. He's a bright young kid. He's got a bright future, and he's just outstanding in that position. Can't wait to see him grow. And again, it won't be long before we're talking about him with the first team. He's had a couple of sniffs on the bench. Hasn't made it onto the field yet for his debut, but it won't be long now. That's Tyler Hall. He's outstanding. I don't know if we'll see him this week against Nashville, but that is what's coming up on the horizon this weekend on the road against Nashville. Yes, Nashville. We talked about <laughs> it on the last show. It feels like every other week we turn around and we're playing Nashville. But that's not a bad thing, Kieran, because over the last six matches, we haven't lost to Nashville, whether it's Open Cup, whether it's Leagues Cup, whether it's Champions Cup, whether it's MLS. The only time we haven't played Nashville yet is in the MLS playoffs. That's the only competition officially that we haven't played Nashville in yet. It could be later this year. I don't know if Nashville will be there in the postseason, but they have turned things around, though. I, I joke. It's been a struggle for them this year. They had the coaching change a little while back now, going into their game against Atlanta. Ever since then, three wins, three draws, only one loss. They've been hard to beat ever since that coaching change. Yeah, I mean, listen, when you, when you have a team that um, has had a, a really strong year and then they, they have a little dip, there's it's only a matter of time before they, you know, you see their true colours again. So for Miami, it's becoming a bit of a, a derby game, as, <laughs> as you say. Um, it does feel like we play against them all the time. But it's, I, I love these games, you know, and it, there seems to be like a, a little bit of a bitterness happening between the two teams, which which we as fans love love to see. So I'm ex expecting a, at least a few fireworks. Um, but um, a game that, you know, definitely coming off the back of this win for, for Miami, that you, you have to think that they're going to come out strong and, and, and definitely confident after after that last performance. One of the best things of this past week, obviously, aside from Inter-Miami's win over Columbus, don't forget, we had the weekend off. And it was a chance for Cincinnati playing on the weekend Against the New England team that had been struggling, it was a chance for us to finally fall out of first place. No. Cincinnati said, you know what? We like seeing it to Miami atop the table, too. And they lost against New England. So they still have a game in hand. They're still two points back. But they lost in the week where they could have made up that ground. So everything right now is turning up into Miami. And you just have to make sure... You keep putting it that way forward because that game against Cincinnati is coming up in a few weeks. You can't look too far ahead, but it is coming, and, and it is still at a point now where we're getting into the second half of the season. We are still in first, and you got to be happy about that if you're Tata Martino in the group. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to be looking too far ahead at this stage because obviously there's always two teams at a season that are, are, are fighting for that number one spot this year. It's Miami and Cincinnati um, and, and focus is the, is the key at the moment. Um, but yeah, as you said, Tata's not going to be wanting to focus on, on two or three games time. He's going to be uh, all guns blazing for, for this Nashville game and, and, and I'm sure the whole squad will be locked in. So another chance to continue the dominance this weekend on the road against Nashville unbeaten in the last six against that club coming off a couple of wins overall in the regular season back to back now for Inter Miami. We thank you once again for joining us on the Inter Miami Weekly Show. Make sure you like and subscribe here on YouTube so you can be with us week after week as we continue through this summer.